Okay, now I have a question. If we're going to build a city, don't shout it out, raise your hand. Where is my horizon line going to be? Julie, no, Mackenzie. Like in the middle of the table. No. Megan? At the top or the bottom? Megan, tell me when you've ever seen the bottom of a city. Never. In the middle. So what would that mean, Megan? Be at the top. So, your horizon line is going to be at the top because everything below the line is land. And we need land to build on. Yeah, it's really zoomed in. Thank you. You're welcome. If we turn both the lights off, do you think it'd be better? Yes. Yeah. Justice pop up and the light switch is behind that black file cabinet. No, go you gotta go around. Okay, A actually close to the edge but not exactly the edge. And B close to the edge but not exactly the edge. And I need to draw a darker. There. Okay. I want you to follow along. C at the bottom. Okay. Now, when you make your line for your first box, Make it shorter rather than longer. If you make a great big line, it's going to be really, really tall. And it's going to be harder to do the details like the sidewalks and the roads. So don't make it across your paper. Just make it short. Top and bottom goes toward A. And it helps if you make the top line a little longer when you're attaching them to C. It makes it just a little easier. So I have the top and the bottom going to point A and the top and the bottom going to point B. Your sides go to vanishing point C. And the top of your building, because it's flat, goes to A and B, just like in two-point perspective. Erase any guidelines that you have that you don't need. So there's our first building. Now I need to tell you something about buildings behind buildings. In three-point perspective, I can show you better than I can tell you. Should we draw this? Uh, use your C point and draw a line that comes up from behind on your box. Your C point is down in the middle on the bottom of your paper. Now, what's the problem going to be if I draw a C line that picks up down here? Okay, if I extend the C line past here, it's going to make this box look like it's floating in the air. Okay, so I can't. It's just got to come up from the top. I'm going to go toward A and the bottom wherever it is goes toward A also. 
top goes toward B. And I don't think I would see this one. So A and A, B, and I don't think I would see B there. So if you're doing a building behind a building, there's a real tendency to make the back building taller than the front building. And I could even do that now if I extended this line way down this way and then went by A, it would still make this one up in the air. So the back line has to be here or up. Actually, yes, the top, if you can, goes to A and B. It's so close to the horizon line that it may almost turn into the same line. You'll see what I mean when you try to do it. It is okay because it's correct. Now that's the easy part. Now I want to do a building that's way out here. This is my C line. Should I wait and let you catch up or are you caught up? Top and bottom always go to A first. There's A and A. I can't go toward B because I would draw through the building. But I think if I lined it up with B, I could probably draw away from it. So there's B. And B. C, A, A, B, B. Sides are by C. And the top of mine's actually going off the page. I don't know if yours is or not. The B lines and the A. Top and bottom goes toward A. The top will go to B, but the bottom's an invisible corner, so I need to leave it alone. So I have a C line. Top goes to A, bottom goes to A, top does go toward B. And I may only be able to see the side and the top.
you guys ready to go on? Yeah. Doors and windows. You have to use every point. The vertical line that you normally would have done in two point perspective is the C line in three point perspective. So I'm going to make a C line where how tall I want my windows to be. And the side that I put them on is going toward point A. So I know that anything on this side of the building has to lean toward point A. So I'm going to take the top and bottom of each one of those lines and line it up with A. And then instead of a vertical, it needs to be a C line to finish them off. Same way on the other side, except the other side goes toward B. So everything on this side, the top and bottom, has to go toward B. So there's B, B, B. The sides are by C. If you want a door, the sides of the door come from C. The top of the door has to go to A because this corner goes to A and this corner goes to A. So everything on this side would be A. There's a C line. The corners are going to A. So I know I have to use point A. The other corner to C. Are you getting the idea? The way you know which point to use is by the corners of the buildings. If they're going to point B, then everything on that side has to go to point B. If they're going to point A, then everything on that side has to go to point A. There you go. You're welcome. The ledges on the tops that I taught you last year, find the back corner of the building, line it up with vanishing point C, and make a tiny little mark. But it's a C line. In two point perspective, it was a vertical. I'm going to line it up, the bottom of it, by A and come down until I hit the building and stop. Going to line the bottom of it with B, go down the other side of the building until I hit the side and stop. Now, it gets sort of weird when you get over here and do it. Every corner that can, back here, that can go to C, has to go. See these back two corners? And they would have to go by A and connect right there. Then from B So I would actually see three sides on this building. You may not be able to on yours. I've got C and C, A, B, and B, and it's because of the angle of the building. 
Are you doing all this? Okay, for this one, the corner's off the page. But if I could, I'd be lining it up with B. And that would be the only part I would see. Right there. I'll give you a minute and let you catch up. Sidewalks. Are sidewalks really tall? No. No, they're relatively flat. So what would that mean for our vanishing points? No. They only go to A and B because C is your depth point and sidewalks don't have depth. So they're just like two-point perspective. I'm going to line up with A and draw a little past the corners of the building. The ends of that line go toward B until it hits the building on this side. And it goes towards B until it goes past the corner on this side. So I have B, A, B, and then I'm going to go back to A. They take turns, just like in two-point perspective. Now what if I wanted a little sidewalk around this building behind? The corner goes to A, the back, the bottom corner goes to A, and so the sidewalk coming out from behind the building would go to A. Then the end would go toward B until it looks like it goes behind the building. And it's easier in the middle. When you go over to the side, it gets a little weird. I'm going to line it up with A, and I'm going to draw a line that goes past the two corners. The ends of those corners go toward B until they hit the building, and both of them on this side are going to hit the building right now. So that would be the sidewalk that I would see. The sidewalk on this side, I'm going to come from A and go past the two corners. Come from B until I hit the building and stop. Come from B until I go past the back corner. And then back up toward A until I hit the building and stop. So there's my sidewalk. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to catch up because I feel like we're starting to go faster.
Okay, is everybody caught up? The cracks in the sidewalk. Just like two-point perspective. On this side, they go to B. On this side, they go to A. And you'll know because if you use the wrong point, you'll be making stripes down your sidewalk instead of the cracks that should go across. Same thing, they're flat. A and B. Line them up with the edges of your sidewalk if you want. Don't draw through your building. Pick up and then pick back up past your building. So there's an intersection. Now if I wanted to make it look like a block, I would have to use A and B. If you remember from two point and from one point, this one has to be longer, that one has to be shorter, and they have to line up with vanishing point B. So I've got A, B, A, and B. If 
I want double lines on my road, I need to look across my road, decide where I think halfway is, and I'm going to put four dots, two for each line. I'm going to use vanishing point A. you can see them. Yeah. There's something you need to understand. I'm looking for the packet. If you flip it over, there's a city on the back that I did. Looks like that. The trees, the trunks of the trees, go to vanishing point C. Even the tree over here. See how it looks like it's sideways? 18-wheeler, park bench. The legs of the park bench have to go to C. Sides of the trash can have to go to C. Your words, the length of your words have to go to C while the tops and bottoms of them go to a vanishing point. Your steps, every line on those little steps goes to one of the points. This is a fence because it's coming from C, so it's tall. These are parking lot lines, only using A and B because they're flat. This is the peak on a roof. Anything that comes up off the ground, if you are going to make a traffic light, it has to come from vanishing point C. We can do without the sound effects. Thank you. If it's one like in Hagerstown, it's going to go out that way, and it actually should go to A, but it gets skinnier as it goes out. And it looks like an L that's upside down. So this part of your pole is from C, and that part's going to A. Are you getting my drift here? A car is on the next page in your packet done in three-point perspective and I did it big so you can see where the lines go. 